Hello, and welcome to the first edition of the Medic Project plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I will be introducing the Medic Project plugin or extension. So let's get started and show you um, what this extension is all about. It basically has currently three toolbars that um, have been created. So we basically have that toolbar, that toolbar, and if I can find it here, the trim tools, uh, which is right over here. Sorry, it's taking me a second. I've got too many toolbars open, of course. Okay, so as you can see, um, this toolbar was originally from the uh, found in the Medic wall plugin, which we moved it to the project plugin. This basically is the documents toolbar. These two icons currently um, do not do anything. Only the scenes icon will create um, uh, elevation scenes for you know uh, selected wall panels. So let's go ahead and just put that back. This toolbar is originally from the um, the Trust plugin. And this is all the uh, regular trim tools that you're familiar with from the Trust plugin. And of course, those trim tools um, work just as well for any geometry, not just the Trust plugin geometry. So wall plugin, Trust plugin, or just anything you happen to draw that's a solid body within SketchUp. So that is the reason uh, why I decided to move uh, that toolbar into this plugin as well. So typically, the Medic project uh, extension or plugin is uh, a tool designed to work across all of the Medic extensions. Um, it's kind of a catch-all for you know little tools and things that uh, don't really fit too well within any one specific uh, plugin, like the foundation or the wall or the truss or the upcoming floor plugin. So that is why I created this plugin. So the other thing uh, I wanted to add is let's just go into this. Uh, into this main toolbar here and you'll notice the calculator has also been moved from the wall plugin and is now here so the this is the estimating module and so you know you click on that and you will start the estimating module up which i have other uh, videos on but so again this piece has been moved into this plugin and now we have a few new tools that have been created but before we get into those new tools um let me just show you also uh with the web page let me load that up over here. So basically the project plugin of course has its own little web page now. I think we're on version 1.02c. Um, and it, if you need to follow the, uh, the basically the forum uh, kind of breadcrumb trail, I guess you can call it, uh, that's available on the SketchUp forums. But I also, of course, uh, at the bottom of this page, you'll find the change log listed here and a concise summary of each update and what it entails. So that is available for you to look at. And I will be listing um, these uh, tutorial videos, of course. Uh, one thing people, I think, don't understand is every one of the plugins has like a little, on the, at the top of the plugin page, we'll have this little table of contents, this green table of contents. And you can quickly get to installation instructions and also video tutorials. So just want people to be aware of that. Um, that is there for them. So anyways, uh, yeah, the project plugin got a little web page here put together for it. You can download the trial. Yeah, you can purchase it, all that good stuff. Um, a few little images here to show you previews of certain things. But let's, uh, let's dig now into the... Um, back into this toolbar here, just take a look at the main toolbar of the project plugin. So first of all, let's go to the global settings. Um, pretty basic right now, We've just got general settings. Uh, you can, of course, change your menus and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> you do have some custom layers that you can uh, specify. Um, now, right now, the plugin does not actually create the layers within the SketchUp model. So once you uh, you know, have these specified and you can leave them as a default, then you can go ahead and create the layers. I'm going to have a little button down here eventually that will go ahead and generate those layers automatically in the model. And the reason for having these specific layers uh, that are custom and that are not part of any other layers being utilized by the other plugins is maybe you have some custom geometry and you want to, uh, you know, maybe furniture or something and you want to have toggle the visibility with the next tool that I'm going to show, which is the uh, layer control, then that will enable you to do that quite easily. So we'll, we'll get into that. But this here is the custom layers. You can turn it on and off. 
And then of course your a license tab here, which I'm not going to show because it'll show my license number, but it's the same essentially as all the other plugins. Okay, so that's uh, not much in the global settings yet. Again, this is a very new plugin. Um, it's just basically created a couple weeks ago. And, uh, you know, initially I just started by um, kind of amassing some of the other tools that I thought would be better suited to fit in this kind of catch-all. Um, so that's kind of the genesis of this plugin. But let's start uh, with this grid tool that I've created. So typically when I've done these videos, you've noticed I've been using the built-in grid tool that comes with uh, SketchUp. Well, it doesn't really come with SketchUp. You have to go find it and download it, but um, it's, it's free. It's out there. It's in the uh, extension warehouse. This one here called Grid, and it's a SketchUp Grid, and you can go ahead and catch your, create your grid, right? Actually, this one I've modified, um, but you know, notice the major line. So that actually is is drawing a Medit Grid, I, and I call this tool the Medit Grid. Um, the difference is is this one, this icon right here. Um, unlike the regular Grid tool it gives you the option for major and minor grid lines. So what I've done here is I've basically have grid lines, minor grid lines set up at every foot, and then major grid lines every four feet. And that just gives me a good uh, visual indication of, you know, kind of where I'm at. So if I'm drawing a wall, I can instantly tell that, yeah, I've got a 20 foot wall there. And it just, it just is, I find a lot help more helpful. Um, if you want to edit that, you can always, the, the, the thing is parametric, so you just right click on it and you edit Medit Grid. And you'll notice you have the ability now to change your minor and your major uh, increment size here. So let's go ahead and just swap this out for eight feet, for instance. And there you go. So now you've got eight foot grid, okay? So that's the grid tool, not a whole lot to it, but I think it's a very simple and effective tool and I use it practically every day. So it's something I really enjoy using. Okay, so to demonstrate the layer control, layer control tool, let's go ahead and just throw up um, four walls here real quick. Um, actually, I don't wanna do that. Um, I don't want an ICF wall. Let's see, let's just... Uh, and do that. Sorry, I had my settings set from a pre the previous uh, wall or uh, video I was making. Uh, let's go ahead and just turn on regular wall framing. Up to on that. Okay, there we go. I wasn't watching my settings here. Okay, so here we go. Regular wall, regular framed wall it is. And we're just drawing a quick box just to, just to get something on the board here, so to speak. And there we go, and I'm going to go ahead and just throw a quick uh, truss roof on it. And Alrighty. Yeah, let's change this to 612, just so we can get a little better. Yeah, leave all these default options for now. Um, let's turn on the gypsum just in case we want that. And it's yeah, advanced options. It's going to draw the gutters. And there we go. Okay. So now we've got our cells. I didn't check, check my material there, but that's fine. We'll just leave it at that for now. Okay, let's throw just a couple of windows and doors in for some architectural interest. And realistically, I should probably put a slab foundation here. Um, so we should probably do that. But let's let's go ahead and let's open up this layer control layer control tool and show you what we've got. So if you have your layers turned on in your global settings for uh, the different plugins, you're going to notice that you have these numbers associated with each layer now. Okay. And with each plugin, it's 0 through 12. Okay. So I've kind of set these up with default numbering. Um, I don't know. What, I don't know if it's reasonable or not, but uh, at least I've set them up and they'll, they'll be assigned a default number. Okay. And you can modify that and customize it to your heart's content. 
But basically what that number does is by having a number associated with it, now I can use this, these toggles and sliders and basically uh, adjust the visibility of various layers. So I'm going to just show you what that does. So you notice right off the bat it starts turning off certain things. Okay, and I'm going to do that with the truss. And there we go. So now we've eliminated down to layer uh, le number one, and that basically leaves the basic framing in place. Okay. So <clears throat> that's kind of what uh, the layer control tool does. It, it allows you to basically, and you'll, you'll notice here on the right hand side, you've got all these layers here, these Medic layers, and you'll notice as I move the slider, they are being checked and unchecked. So based on the number that was assigned to that layer, that determines the visibility at that point. So you can, like I said, you can quickly just, instead of having to come over here and check boxes and uncheck boxes, which takes a lot of time, you know, especially when you've got this many layers to deal with. You know, if you just want to show the framing, you just quickly slide your slider over there and boom, you're, you've got, you know, just the framing visible and, and you can work with that. So I'm going to leave this tool up and then I'm going to, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just create a quick slab on grade here with this slab on grade tool and we'll just do rectangular which is fine so i'm just going to go right here give me another point right there and then right here and that's fine let's just leave all the settings there i think i'll just go regular rebar yeah that's fine okay Right, so now we've got ourselves a slab, okay? And again, we've got in the foundation plugin, if you turn on the layers, which I haven't turned on, you'll notice that you have these default numbers associated with them, and those are your visibility numbers, right? So now if I start sliding this slider here, you're gonna notice that it's controlling what's visible. And I've tried to set up in a sensible manner, so like, you know, obviously you're gonna put your rebar in first, then you're going to lay your concrete. Uh, you know, maybe anchor bolts come after you poke those in after it kind of sets up a little bit. And then, of course, the, the labels and such at the end. And then again, um, you have the electrical layer. Oh, I'm not going to show that right now. Um, this video will get way too long, but you can do the exact same thing with electrical plug-in. And you have your rough electrical and your finished electrical. And then also you again have this custom layer control, which allows you to. Um, uh, <clears throat> put certain things on custom layers that are created within the project plugin and then you can control the visibility quickly with those as well. So in a nutshell I think layer control is a pretty handy tool to have. I mean it's not I don't think it's a critical item but it's nice that you can uh, quickly go like this and then like this and you don't have to sit there and check boxes and uncheck all these boxes to control your visibility. So yeah, just one little feature that, again, works across all the plugins and I think is a helpful tool to have. All right, let's uh, now quickly jump over to this feature, the, the project info tool. Okay, I call it the project information tool or project info tool. Um, just kind of zoom out here. So <clears throat> this tool is very much a work in progress. I just have started working on it. Basically, what it's the intent of it is to it's basically model specific now. So it's not it's not just dealing with one piece of you know geometry in your model. It's actually setting what I call um, a, setting up a database essentially for this file. Okay. So when I click on this, you're going to notice off the bat that everything's blank. Okay. So there's no name or anything. Uh, associated with this file or model, um, the client information is going to be blank. So if I go ahead and fill this out, um, let's see, let's just quickly do that. I know it's a little tedious for everybody watching this video. Um, number okay so you know you quickly fill this out notice how everything goes red um, well I put that in the wrong spot let's put that right there and then let's put Saratoga Springs 
So what's happening is, is when you save this, um, it's putting it, it's saving it in an attribute library at the at the root of this model or file. Okay, so I'll click Save Settings, saves it, and once you save it, then it goes back from white. Okay, so I'm going to just jump out of this, and and after you do that, you obviously um, um, you want to. I'm going to move this toolbar up here. Just get out of my way. You want to uh, save your file because if you do if you do not save your file after making you know adjustments in there, um, it, it's just like making model adjustments. It's not going to save, right? Okay, so let's just save that file so we at least have it saved. All right, so you don't have to do that you know right away, but I'm just saying when you jump out of SketchUp. Okay, so when I go back into the project info now, notice that this information is all there and it's part of this file now right it's not associated with any geometry it is part of the base file itself it's an attribute library within the base file and just to prove that point i'm going to use an extension by uh, christina enroth and it's called attribute edit attribute editor and if you look at attribute editor and you look at the current model you will see that under a library here called medic project we have all of this information stored, okay? So it's still, it's basically creating a little database within the file itself. All right, so just, just so you're clear on that, what's happening, how that works. Um, okay, so now you ask, well, what is the point of all this? Well, as, as you're, you know, working on these models and, and projects, you know, you're wanting to get uh, seismic information, wind information, snow information, and, and send that in Maybe the, maybe the engineer is working with this plugin, or maybe he's not, or maybe just the architect or designer. It doesn't really matter. But that kind of what I call site criteria, you know, you'll find it in the IDC or the IRC. Um, you know, you, you typically need that information um, along with your construction documents. So the cool thing is, is once you've got your address in here, I mean, you can click on this map and you can... Uh, you know, manually click on it and notice how it will um, <clears throat> show, it'll basically find the elevation and find the latitude and longitude of that exact point you clicked. But if you put your address in there, you can just hit this geolocate address and it will automatically take this and send that over to Google and geolocate it and update this. Now you want to hit your save settings and then it will save that information. Okay. So now that is saved part of the file. Another cool thing I added, um, I'm just, you know, I, I really like using that Geo or Google Maps. Um, let's say, for instance, you want this to be shown, like, let's say, in a terrain or satellite imagery. So we can set that to terrain, right? Okay, so now once you've set that and you've saved those settings, you should be able to now, next time you load this, And notice that it remembered your settings for that map, as well as it's pulling up, it's auto geo, you know, positioning the map at this specific location. Okay, and it'll set it exactly as uh, what they call zoom eleven, but you can zoom it in and out. But that, but that information will not be saved. All right, so just just basically this establishes the latitude and longitude and elevation of your project site. Okay, and that information, of course, will be used then to generate your seismic wind snow and other data for your project okay so of course i'm not there yet um so now if you go to these other tabs you're going to notice they're all under construction but uh the goal is of course now to add in these other um, uh, tabs and give you the ability to connect to the usgs service and get your seismic data for your site just based off of uh, the information here in your general data. Anyways, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, again, this is a very new feature. So, um, you know, there's still going to be a lot of uh, modifications, I'm sure, and additions and, and other uh, tweaking of, of this uh, new feature. But um, I, think, I think it'll prove to be useful. Anyways, if anybody has any questions on it, uh, any questions on the new project plugin, um, I think it's uh, it, it makes sense to break out some of these more general tools and place them into it from the Trust and Wall plugin. 
And then, of course, we're starting to add in a few extra tools as well. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we will talk to you guys soon.